you chose that in that passage of music to demonstrate what we're going to talk about next, which is polyphasing, which you use along with the polyrhythms to create a deeper complexity. Yeah, um, different people use the words different ways, but the way I'm using polyphasing to mean is when you've got, um, that, for example, two parts moving at the same speed, but they've got different numbers of notes in their phase. So if I've got this pattern that's moving in the same speed as this pattern, but they've got a different number of notes, so they fade and out each other. It's been done quite a lot, you know, Steve Reichs and a lot of that kind of stuff, and the minimalist composer of the 20th century. Did a lot with uh, phasing. But when you mix it in with polyrhythm, uh, then it starts to get really interesting because, uh, for example, I could have a seven over five, but each of the parts, each of the parts, the seven and the five, have both only got three notes in their part. So the seven is phasing in three, you could say, and the five is phasing in three. So like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 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 over one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Sounds like this. Whereas if you had um, the moving at the same speed, it would sound like this. And what would it sound like if it was a seven and a five with the seven phasing and seven and the five and five? So not yeah, phasing. so the seven phasing and seven, the pattern's like a simple scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, over versus five, and two, three, four, five. So you can clearly see the seven and the five. something I never really practiced because it's not very interesting. No. Just, just having a seven over five just straight, patterns of a, a pattern of seven, a pattern of five, is the kind of thing I did right at the beginning when I was just learning to do seven over five and I needed that to be able to keep it together. But once you can do that, it's much more interesting playing when the, the seven has anything that's not a multiple of seven and the five has anything that's not a multiple of five and then it sort of weaves in and out. Creates longer phase patterns before they come back to the beginning again. Yeah, so are you using pretty much exclusively poly polyrhythm with polyphasing now? Pretty much exclusively. I mean, every now and again, I, I, might, I might not do. But it, it really extends the phase out. If, you, if you've got seven over five, then they meet every one, right? Yeah. So this one here, um, or even, they meet, they meet again and again. But if you had seven over five phasing in three, like if I did a pattern where I just did one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, with a seven, and one, two, three, with a five, you'd get this. Um. One. One. So the, the phase pattern's much longer. It's much, much more going on before you get back to the one. So it kind of orbits round and then it again meets on the one. And the more you multiply these numbers out, the more you're adding more polyrhythms and higher phase numbers, the longer this space is between the very first one and the point where it all meets round again, like, a, like an orbit, you know, like an eclipse. So just taking that, the, the seven phasing in three and the five phasing in three, when will they meet? Well, after the, after the seven, seven's done seven lots of three and the five's done yeah. five lots of three. I mean, if you listen to this here. One. You're here between each time I say one, there's five of these. One, two, three, four, five. And seven of these. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So after seven of those and five of them, they meet again on the one. Yeah. Otherwise, they're not meeting there at the beginning. Every time the one comes around polyrhythmically, like, hang on. It's, um, they're not going to be in the same place. So they come back to exactly the same place again after seven lots of the three. Seven lots of the seven and five lots of the five. Obviously. It's going to be seven lots of the seven, isn't it? Because, yeah, okay. I don't want to patronise anybody who might be watching this. 
And going back to the idea of the polyrhythms working best when they are primes, does that work, the same principle work for polyphasing? I know you said that it's, it's better if they don't, so if a five doesn't... Um, use five or a ten. The, the the phase patterns don't need to be prime. For me, I can I particularly use a lot of fours, twos, sixes because mainly because I'm using prime poly rhythms. I'm using seven against five against three against two. So if I'm using four phases and six phases and eight phases, then they're not going to clash with mm -hmm. the actual numbers. So they're going to multiply out to their bigger numbers. Mm. I don't want to use seven phases with a seven or five phases with a five. So I'm I'm more likely to use um, much more. Um, divisible numbers like 12 is really great because you can just chop it lots of ways but um yeah a lot of my phrase patterns are fours threes twos sixes and then the polyrhythms themselves are sevens fives things do that's just my preference i don't think there's anything no reason why you couldn't do polyrhythms of eight against three and phase the eight and seven and phase the three and five but i just haven't done that much and in the etude, you've played around quite a lot with um note patterns haven't you that they that it's it's not always um scales or, or rising or falling numbers it's um yeah i mean the, the eighth etude is a good example of a really simple pattern of this it's like a high note and three low notes on the other hand a low note and three high notes which on its own would just sound like this a bit like a churny exercise or something like that but when you play the right hand a speed of five and left hand against a speed of three. So you've got a four phase, one, two, three, four, but moving five against three. Then they weave in a really interesting way. You get this. Um. It's a little example of one of the patterns from the mm. eighth edge. That's really interesting um, addition to the understanding of, of, of polyrhythm in your music. And uh, what would be really good to talk about in the next video would be how polyrhythm and polyphasing serves your musical vision. Mm. And um, we'll do that. So do you want to... Play us out with one of the etudes that best. Yeah, I suppose a good example, um, an easy to see example of, of what's going on there is the end of the second etude because um, you've just got a little, a little rising four and a falling four and a falling five, but they're at prime speeds two against three against five. So it sounds like this. Um, 